Hello there, good evening. Welcome back to I Care For Your Brain with our Wednesday night free brain health lecture with Dr. Karen Sullivan. That is me, your board certified neuropsychologist at your service. Before we get started with tonight's lecture, which is going to be all about memory testing and how neuropsychologists go about doing that, I first have to say thank you so much to our lovely brain health community here on Facebook who has been so gracious in congratulating me on my Goldman Sachs Small Business Scholarship. Uh, we are in week three of the program and I'm already learning so, so much. The whole point of me doing this is to understand how to grow what it is we do here on Facebook, how it is I help my patients in real life. It feels to me like this model of care that is heavy on education and heavy on support is exactly what more people need. So I am determined to find the smartest way possible to do it. So tonight's topic is memory testing. Many of you have memory concerns. You're here because you have some type of brain health challenge. The very best way to understand these symptoms is to go see a board certified or a board eligible neuropsychologist. We are clinical psychologist with specialty education and training in the brain. We are really into assessment of brain function within the context of a person. That is what I love so much about neuropsychology is that we are person first and brain second. But we are very, very good at evaluating things like cognition and mood. Neuroimaging, MRI, CT scans, these are a wonderful tool. We really, really appreciate them in neuropsychology, but it's very important to know that it doesn't necessarily line up with what you see on the image and how someone's brain is doing. So we have a big difference between structure and function when it comes to the brain. So brain scans, sometimes people can overestimate how much information they can give you. For example, my doctor told me my CT scan was pretty normal for my age. Well, you still could have some subtypes of dementia. So I want you to think about neuroimaging as it's really good for ruling things out. It can tell you if you've had a stroke, if you have a brain tumor, if you have a bleed, if you've had a skull fracture. But for many types of dementia, not all, many types of dementia, the neuroimaging just kind of lets me know what it's not. And what I really need to do is to do neuropsychological testing to figure out what it is. And so this is a study that has been happening since 1885, the very first memory, uh, very first book on testing human memory was put out. Most of the people that are referred to my practice have a little note on there from their primary care doc or from their neurologist that says evaluate for memory concerns, concerned about memory, please help us understand if this is dementia. So we get referrals from these folks and the first thing we're evaluating is who is concerned, right? Is it the person themselves putting forward the referral? You know, I wanna go see someone, I feel like maybe my memory's not as good as it once was. Is it the doctor that's concerned? Are they observing something? Is it the spouse? That's kind of the very first level of analysis that we do as neuropsychologists to kind of wrap our head around what might be going on here. So the next thing we do is contact the person and we are able to schedule them for an interview. If you go to have memory testing with a neuro a psychologist, this will be the same progression for you. So an interview for memory testing takes about an hour and what's really important is to try to have someone with you that knows you well, a friend or a family member, because we want to get the concerns, the timeline of when things may or may not have started from multiple people. And what we're gathering here is subjective data, right? We wanna know what each individual person thinks. Through the testing, we are able to gather objective data. And the job of a neuropsychologist is to put it together and figure out where the truth lies. So in the interview, I have some questions that I want to know the answers to. Most important is onset. When did these symptoms start? Was it abrupt? Was it gradual? Was it associated with a certain medication or a medical procedure? We want examples. I want to know specifically what is this person having trouble remembering? 
I also am very concerned about the course of memory symptoms. And what I mean by that is has it been, if you were to, to graph it on a piece of paper, would we be talking about something that's like this? Would we be talking about something like this? Sometimes there's variability and memory symptoms appear and then disappear. We want to know medical conditions, medications, stress. I mean, that's why it takes an hour, right? It's the whole person approach. How's your sleep? Do you have chronic pain? How's your appetite? What's the family history like of many any memory problems? Does anything make it worse? Does anything make it better? When I get the answers to all these questions, then I can tell my assistants who do my testing, my wonderful technicians, what specific memory tests I want to do with each individual patient. There are a couple standards that we go to, but really a good neuropsychologist is personalizing the test to go along with your specific complaints and your specific memory history, right? That whole idea of abrupt or gradual, what are we really looking for here? Memory testing typically takes about three hours and it's not all just memory because oftentimes folks can feel like it's a memory problem, but when we really get down to it, it is an attention problem. Maybe it's an expressive speech problem. Maybe it is a learning disorder. There's so many different things that hang out with memory that we have to test in order to do memory evaluation. So yes, there will be very clear things that are testing your memory, but there also may be some things that you're like, how the heck is this related? But in our minds, we know, and in the feedback session, that's our job is to explain all of it to you. What was the function of the whole testing appointment? The technicians that work for me are absolutely fabulous, and their job is to provide you with just enough support to do your very best. They're not there uh, to be an overexcited cheerleader. They're not there to give you hints, but they are there to support you in giving your very best performance. So the instructions that they give you are clear. There are no tricks. There is very straightforward communication and you are asked to do your very best on the testing. So the way the testing goes is it can be very easy. Sometimes it can be very, very hard. And again, if you think that your only job is to try your best, you'll really be all set. In the testing, we are looking at so many different things, as I said before, but within memory, we look at verbal memory, which we think of as happening more in the left side of our brain. We look at spatial memory, which we think about more on the right side. Again, we're looking at attention. We're looking at your learning. These things are very, very important to answer questions about memory. So once you do your very best on the test, we score it. We figure out how, how many points you got on a certain test. And then this is the really super cool part. We are able to compare how you did on a given test to other people in your peer group. And we try to find the closest peer group that we possibly can to you. We want the same age, we want the same education. We can even break it down sometimes into your handedness. So we're trying to compare as close of a person as you are. And we wanna understand how you did compared to your age norm, right? But we're also comparing how you're doing now to what we can project was your cognitive baseline. And that is a really important point. That's why cognitive screens are a no-go in my world. They are a good way to start the conversation. They may be a good way in deciding to make a referral to a specialist, but if your memory evaluation begins and ends with what year is it and remember these three words, it's not comprehensive enough. It really needs to be a couple hours in order to get the answers that you deserve. So we're really looking at the pattern of all of your test performances. And again, we can determine is this an attention problem, learning. Many people feel like they have a bad memory and what we can tell from the testing is that it's really a recall problem. The brain is able to learn, the brain can form a new memory, it's just the quick finding of that information. That's that tip of the tongue feeling. You know, we know that actor's name, but my gosh, what movie did I see him in last, right? It drives us crazy. That's why aphasia and word finding difficulties is so frustrating because it's just a generally annoying thing to know you know something, but you can't find that little bit of information. So we are able to figure out where things break down in that whole process. So sometimes if folks can't recall it, if we give them enough prompts, they are able to choose, oh yes, that was the word I heard. And so that pattern tells us about what is going on in the brain, what might not be working 
as well. And since we're comparing you to your peers, this is how we answer that question for older folks. Is this just a function of your age? Is this how an 82 year old person remembers? Or is it something else? Is it significantly impaired alongside how you're doing in everyday life and your mood? Does this meet criteria for normal aging? Does this meet criteria for cognitive impairment? Or does this meet criteria for dementia? Okay, so we are looking at a lot of statistics when we do memory testing, percentiles, things called Z-scores, scaled scores, and it's basically all to just help compare us to how we think someone who is in good brain health should be doing on the test. So our job is to put it all together, determine what cognitive diagnosis you have, if any, most important in the older folks I see is, is this dementia or not? And it's once we know that subtype that we can actually educate people about their personal situation. You know, let me help you understand what's happening at the physiological level. You know, here are the medications I'm gonna recommend back to your primary care, your neurologist. We talk about the future, what to expect with this kind of diagnosis. We talk about what community resources are out there. You know, would you benefit from seeing a counselor? Are you someone who should consider disability? The neuropsychologist's job is to apply the test findings in a helpful framework to you, your family, and your life, okay? It shouldn't just be kind of an intellectual exercise. What we should really see is action happening after your neuropsych evaluation. So again, you do not wanna settle for these cognitive screens. If that is the beginning of a step towards getting you to a neuropsychologist, I am down with that. But if that's all you are offered, that is unacceptable and you need to be assertive about finding a board certified or a board eligible neuropsychologist. If you cannot find one on your own, you know we are a resource for you. If you send us a private message with your zip code in the US, we will do our very best to find you a person close by. One of the most important decisions we make after memory testing is should someone be offered the one of five FDA approved cognitive enhancing medications, memory enhancing medications. And you might think, well, shouldn't everyone be able to get them? Well, they only help folks with very specific types of memory problems. So we're not gonna throw pills at someone if they're not gonna benefit, because what we always wanna be mindful of is something called polypharmacy, which means giving folks too many medications. And we have crazy interactions between these multiple medications, two-way interactions, three-way, four-way, and it's just not the right thing to do. Many people that I see in my practice take these medicines, but they never ever should have been put on them because the condition they have is not going to be helped. Vice versa. I see many people who I'm so sad that they did not get put on these medications years ago because they would be doing better today if they had. So when all of this comes together, I really hope that this is, reduces your anxiety about asking for a memory testing evaluation. I want you to be less nervous going through the testing. Your neuropsychologist should explain all this to you at the end of your interview. I want you to know that when we mem uh, measure memory, that we are using a science-based tool. It might seem very basic. We use a pencil and a piece of paper for most of what we do. Um, but I can assure you it is a very science-based tool that is really the most sophisticated way of looking inside your brain, understanding how you as a human being are functioning in the world with your memory being one part of those functions, okay? It's only by knowing where you're at today with a brain health issue that you're gonna be able to have a target for treatment that is personalized to you. So if this is interesting to you, if you think, wow, memory is really more complex than I thought, maybe you would like Brain School this month. So October 14th, we are gonna do evidence-based methods for improving your memory. Uh, by signing up on our website, you get access to the 90-minute live lecture. You get a 68-page PDF companion workbook sent to your email, which has my slides, articles, tracking sheets to make better brain health choices. And we have been having a whole lot of fun around there. I don't think I'm gonna be able to offer it again in the future, so this is really a one-time deal. If you don't sign up for this one, I'm, I'm not offering it as a replay, and I'm probably not gonna do brain school in the future. I'm trying to find more uh, ways of reaching people, and, and I, I don't think that 
is going to be something that we're able to do in the future. We're having a great time now doing it and I know that you would learn a whole lot and it's a wonderful community over there. So if you uh, would love to join us, the sign up will be in the comments. You can also go to the website, which is IC fyb.com i care for your brain.com so thank you so much i would appreciate you sharing this across facebook to help us support our science-based brain health mission definitely on a mission to improve things it's really been on my mind a lot with this business program that i'm in how we need an industry disruptor in brain health we are not getting the education and the support that you all need and deserve when you go to the doctor. So please, please, please let me know if you agree with that. If you cheer me on, that's gonna mean a whole lot to me and help keep my motivation as high as it can be. I will be back with you very soon and thank you all so much for your attention and being with me here tonight. Take care, bye-bye.